is your stomach sticking out, it can be a result of your scoliosis. Scoliosis is an unnatural sideways curvature from the front, and it has a rotation associated with it. It means that the spine has a bend and a twist. And this bend and twist need a measure in a Cobb angle of 10 degrees or greater for it to be considered scoliosis. Now, scoliosis can affect the body in many different ways because the first thing it does is it induces uneven and unnatural forces to the body. And this is normally from the front view. They have asymmetrical forces. This disruption causes body, uh, overall body asymmetry, and it can lead to uneven shoulders, uneven hips, and an uneven rib arch, uneven waist. Now, can scoliosis affect the way your stomach or your how your stomach protrudes or make your stomach stick forward relative to your body. Well, there's also normal curvatures of the spine that occur from the side. And these are called your, this is called your sagittal or your side alignment. And these number of curvatures, there's a number of spinal conditions that can evolve or affect these normal curvatures of the spine. And one of them can cause your stomach to stick out and that's called hyperlordosis of the lumbar spine. Hyperlordosis of the lumbar spine is can make your stomach stick more forward. The spine has two types of normal curvatures, something called a lordosis and a kyphosis. A lordo or lordosis is when a curvature, when a curve of the spine bends to the front, it bends forward toward, towards the center of the body. And a kyphosis is when the spine bends towards the back or to the back or to the away from the body centers. Hyperlordosis is when you have too much forward bend or an excessive spinal lordosis. Now there's normal amounts of lordosis that occur in the neck and the low back, and there's a normal amount of kyphosis that occurs in the mid back. And these three main sections are normally work in, in conjunction with each other to make the spine deal with compressional or gravitational forces, meaning the neck has a lordosis, the lumbar spine has a lordosis and the thoracic spine has a kyphosis. And these curves work like an S to deal with the compression of the spine or compression of gravity on the spine. So it makes the body deal with what's actually occurring and compression forces in the body and gravity. Hyperlordosis can affect the lumbar and cervical spine. And it means when you have too much curvature, meaning the curve has gotten too big. Now, how does hyperlordosis affect the body? When we look at hyperlordosis in the lumbar spine, this is very commonly associated with something called sway back, is when the, there's too much arch in the low back and it causes the stomach to protrude forward and the buttocks to protrude back. And it's kind of like a, buck, a butt back, body forward position, right? And what happens is in this position, the body is predisposed to other types of forces. Now there's a strong association with this hyperlordosis, meaning butt back, stomach forward position, and scoliosis. Meaning, is it will scoliosis itself cause this position? No, but many scoliosis positions present this way because of something that actually occurs. What ends up happening, the most common thing that tends to happen in a scoliosis patient is the, is the kyphosis in the mid-back becomes decreased. And as the scoliosis, as the kyphosis in the mid-back becomes decreased, the lordosis in the lumbar spine becomes increased and the lordosis in the neck becomes decreased as well. So they get a flat neck, a flat mid-back, and because of this flattening, they get excessive curves in the lumbar spine and they look very flat from the side until they get to their to their low back and then their butt kind of sticks back or their butt sticks back and they have this large amount of sway back. Now this position is actually one of the highest indicators for a curve, a curve being progressive during growth. So when, if we see a young juvenile or adolescent that hasn't gone through puberty yet, they have a small curve and they present this way, butt back, stomach forward, fit, very flat in the mid back, loss of curve in the neck, and the curve hasn't progressed enough, this is a very high indicator for scoliosis progression during growth. And the reason why is because this position predisposes them to not deal with compressive forces properly. And there is, as, as they're growing, the lack of adopting the compressive forces could cause the curves to increase further as they grow. So this is one of the reasons, what we, one of the common things we tend to see. So even if I see patients that have a small scoliosis and they present this way, the scoliosis itself is not causing this presentation, it's the hyperlordosis, but the scoliosis and this hyperlordosis 
are very commonly associated with scoliosis progression. So when we see these unnatural curvatures, if we can control the hyperlordosis, we believe we can control the progression of the scoliosis as well. So even though in classic scoliosis treatment, the goal is dealing with the front views of the spine, in here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we treat a whole wide range of spinal conditions because hyperlordosis is included as one of the predisposing factors to scoliosis progression. So our goal is to reduce the hyperlordosis as well. In addition, we try to increase the thoracic kyphosis as well because those two things are related. The more decreased the thoracic kyphosis that they have, the more likely they are to develop a hyperlordosis. And those things, if we can control those things, we can control the expression of the scoliosis. And we do that through our scoliosis type of treatment that normally addresses hyperlordosis as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.